The first winter weather of the season forced the closure of the garrison for a day this week. We solicited a bunch of photos from the community Facebook page. Here are just a few. Snowmen, obviously a big theme. There were large ones and small ones, some dressed up for the occasion, and some inviting the whole family. For some Fort Meade residents, it was the very first snow and the first opportunity to break out the sleds, even if you weren't really all that interested. Snow angels were popular, and let's not forget our four-legged friends who seem to enjoy the weather just as much as everyone else. The photos are a reminder that during weather events, the Facebook page and Twitter page are going to have the information released first. If you'd like a text alert from Twitter, send FT Mead Alert to 40404. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spam. In other news, Garrison Commander Colonel Brian Foley is hosting a Child, Youth, and School Services Town Hall next Tuesday, December 17th at 6 p.m. at the McGill Training Center. The Town Hall is for parents and family members who were unable to attend the November 14th Town Hall. The focused on actions the garrison has taken since a former CYSS employee was charged with sexual abuse of a minor. The town hall will be aired live on the internet on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Stay tuned to our website, Facebook page, and Twitter for further details. Meanwhile, a few weeks ago we reported on the Asymmetric Warfare Group's ability to provide unique training opportunities. The AWG's Lieutenant Colonel, Sinise Limbaca, goes underground for the latest. What are some of the capability gaps and tactics, techniques, and procedures affiliated with operating within a subterranean environment? Along with building adaptive and resilient soldiers, these are some of the objectives that the Asymmetric Warfare Group is looking at. So today we conducted a, another training event using the equipment that we have on hand to conduct a, a low-cost training event. Uh, we've been doing this over the last two months for the entire group to cross-level knowledge on subterranean environment and climbing techniques. Uh, this event was a little more in-depth. We went around and we acquired some more apparatuses to create uh, tunnels to get people to become more comfortable uh, utilizing those and working in confined space. Now, we weren't able to darken the tunnels to create the complete subterranean effect, so we raised them above the ground to increase that stress factor. But we were able to utilize uh, drainage tunnels uh, in order to have our operational advisors get experience going through tunnels. And a team of three had to, to negotiate uh, the obstacle by moving through it uh, and then extracting a, a person out of it. We continue to refine what we're learning by conducting these training events. Uh, we show people how we've done it, and then we observe how other teams are doing it. Doing things like this is challenging for people because people have a natural fear of heights and confined spaces, dark places. And uh, when they get through it, they realize it's not that bad. It's not as hard as they make themselves think it is. And in the end, they all come out a little more confident in their abilities, and they, they all enjoyed it. Earlier this week, we released week five of the Healthy Chad Initiative as we follow Public Affairs Officer Chad Jones and his quest for a healthier life and lifestyle. During the show, Chad uses a walk around Burble Lake when he doesn't have time to work out. Here's a similar message from the Veterans Administration. Jen and Yolanda have been friends since basic training. They do almost everything together, from their usual morning coffee to checking out the latest movie. But one thing they don't do together, work out. Like many Americans, Jen can't find time to exercise, or it's just not a priority. Yolanda, on the other hand, does find time to work out. And guess what? She feels better, has more energy, and sleeps better at night. What Jen doesn't realize is she could still find activity around the workplace, like standing instead of sitting, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, parking further away from the entrance. She can do simple things that will have huge long-term impact. Some physical activity is better than none. To achieve substantial health benefits, adults should do at least two and a half hours per week of moderate activity. Cardio should be performed in episodes of at least 10 minutes, and it's okay to spread activity throughout the week. Health benefits include lower risks of heart disease, diabetes, some cancers. Regular physical activity prevents weight gain, reduces depression, and improves sleep. These are just a few. So, be active in your own way. Carry groceries, mow the lawn, do yoga or tai chi, walk the dog, dance, swim or golf. All are great examples of muscle strengthening, cardio and stretching activities. Find what works for you. Make the time and talk to your healthcare team. Set your goals to be physically active. VA Healthcare is defining excellence in the 21st century. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great mid-week.